Hey, welcome back guys. Uh, so this video is actually going to kind of tie into the last video as well as my video where I showed you how to test homemade antennas. But in the last video, which was my guide to video transmitters where I try to help you pick the best one for you, I mentioned that not all video transmitters actually output the power that they are rated for across all the channels, where some video transmitters actually do. Now how do I know that? Because manufacturers don't say that in their product description when they're trying to sell it to you. The way I know is by using the Immersion RC RF power meter, and you guys have seen me use this before, especially in that video where I test homemade antennas. So what all is this good for, and why do I use it all the time? Uh, well, like I just mentioned, I whenever I purchase a new video transmitter, I'm just curious to know how much power is being output, not only out of it in general, but across all the channels, because some channels will be lower than what it's rated for, some channels will be higher than what it's rated for. I use it to test homemade antennas uh, because this will help you perfect your own homemade antennas. Uh, this is, will tell you how close or far off you are with your measurements of the wires and you can actually change channels on your video transmitter and see the power output increasing or decreasing and that will tell you if you need to increase or decrease the length of the wire or if you have store-bought antennas and you're just curious to know which one performs the best you can use this for that if you think your video transmitter may be fried then this is just one additional way of testing it's actually a very fast and easy way of testing to know if it's fried or not now you don't have to have something like this uh, you could just have a spare video transmitter and pop it on and that will quickly tell you um, whether the old one was bad or not and there's a host of other things that I use this for. So let me go ahead and show you around and let's see what it's all about. What comes in the box is going to be the meter itself, a coax extension with SMA connectors on both sides, and a 30 dBm uh, attenuator. What's the purpose of the attenuator? It kind of acts like an antenna. Uh, you know, like I keep saying, if you power on video transmitters without an antenna on it, it will sometimes fry the video transmitter and even if it doesn't fry it sometimes will still degrade the quality of it this will act like an antenna it goes deeper into it but that's a simple explanation as far as powering this you can use a barrel connector and put a xt60 connector on the other end and plug in a looks like a 2 to 3s lipo 6 to 16 volts and power it that way so if you're in the field that's a handy thing to have or you can use a USB cable. You can also upgrade the firmware using the USB port. I just power it with a USB cable coming off of my computer. So if you just plug it in, it fires right up. You have three buttons on the side, which are basically up and down arrows with the middle button being the selection button. The frequencies that you can use this for are going to be 5.8 gigahertz, 2.4, 1.2, which is still going to be 1.3. Um, 900, 868, 433, 72, and 35. If we press the middle button, we go into the menu. Here you can set your attenuator, which, like I said, the one that comes with it is 30 uh, dB. You can make fine adjustments to it, change the contrast of the screen, change your mode from average to peak power, which I'll explain later, and mode you can do in either milliwatts or dBm, which is a measurement of RF power being transmitted through the video transmitter. So first up, let's just say we want to uh, either test a video transmitter to see if it's fried or not, or a better example would be this is a 25 milliwatt video transmitter. Let's see if it's actually outputting 25 milliwatts, which is what it's rated for. And on top of that, we will see if it's actually outputting 25 milliwatts across all channels or if some channels are lower and some channels are higher. So I will just take the meter, screw on the attenuator, screw on the extension, and then screw on the video transmitter. I've already got a harness uh, soldered into a PDB just to do a quick little test. Now before we power up the video transmitter, let's set this up. We want to go to the menu and because we are testing the video transmitter, we will set this to 30 dBm. Um, if you are testing antennas, you would set this to zero. 
for the mode you can leave it at average or peak um, what I will do is run through it in the average mode and then I'll go back and test the peak and we want to change this to milliwatts then exit make sure you have the frequency set to the frequency of your video transmitter which is 5.8 gigahertz in this example now if I plug in a LiPo battery we get power to the video transmitter we are now seeing 30 milliwatts and that is on I've got it set to the fact chart band and let's go to channel 1 so channel 1 we're seeing 26 milliwatts then channel 2 it went up channel 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 so we see from the test that this is actually above the 25 milliwatt rating uh, we're actually seeing a max of 31 and a minimum of 25.81 so this is a simple way of seeing which channel is going to be the strongest um, channel 1 is going to be the weakest and channel 8 is going to be the strongest and that's just in this case sometimes it's backwards sometimes channel 1 is the strongest and 8 is the weakest and then like I said on some video transmitters it holds constant throughout all of them alright now I'm going to power this one off and let's test out the Lumineer which is this one right here it's rated for 600 milliwatts let's see if we get the same results with this video transmitter okay now I've got it on Fat Shark Band channel 1 like I said this is rated for 600 milliwatts and it's actually outputting 673 then channel 2 673 channel 3 channel 4 channel 5 channel 6, channel 7, channel 8, and going back to channel 1. So 649. We started at 670 something, it's now to 649. The reason for that is because as video transmitters heat up, uh, they will lose, they'll have a little bit of power dissipation, and that's pretty normal. Um, there's nothing wrong with this video transmitter. But we see basically they are all the same across all channels. So just the opposite of what happened with the last video transmitter. And not only that, but we found out that this video transmitter actually is rated for 600 milliwatts. Uh, I know 649, 650 uh, is higher, but like I said, once you get this to full operating temperature, which means how you would normally be flying with the battery plugged in for a while, it will settle down around 600. So that tells me that this is a pretty high quality video transmitter holding the same power output across all channels and uh, with its resting you know full temperature uh, power output is going to be around 600 where a cheaper video transmitter is going to be lower you know obviously than what the you know it says it's rated for and then to test uh, either homemade antennas or store-bought antennas uh, all you would do is just screw an antenna into the end you don't need the attenuator or the extension you would just set this to 0 uh, dB and then change the mode to dBm and that's it like I said if you look in the description below you'll find my video on uh, how I test my antennas but just give you a, a rundown on how you would actually do it because I don't I don't do it how I actually do it in that video you just have an antenna plugged in on this and running then plug in a LiPo battery to your multi-rotor and you want to walk away from this until the DBM is around 25. Once it's at 25 then uh, that's where you can start you know unscrewing the antenna and screw a different one on and if the number decreases then that antenna is better. If the number increases then it's worse. And that does it for this one guys, so I hope you have a better idea of how this works and what it is useful for, which is uh, many different things. I use this all the time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.